humbles himself as a, as this little child is therefore whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea so in matthew chapter 16 the earlier two chapters uh, few chapters earlier we read the bold declaration of jesus to peter you are peter and on this rock i i will build my church and the gates of hades shall not prevail against it so uh, having said all that uh, jesus could have pointed out towards peter and said you are the greatest or even john his favorite disciple he could have pointed out to john john and said you are the greatest but he calls a child and he says that they were uh, uh, he he made an example of the child and he said okay they were suppo supposed to humble themselves like a child so children uh, generally in a jewish uh, society had no importance or rights they were uh, dependent and under the authority of their parents uh, teachable they were teachable and they were not uh, ruled by the desire, desire of uh, power so they were like a piece of clay ready to be molded so they forgive easily and they do not hold back any baggages or grudges so jesus also wants people about the wrong teaching if you cause these little ones to sin so they, although they were vulnerable to to a greater extent, they extent they were not supposed to be exploited. So the, Jesus is uh, making a profound statement here that the the disciples they were usually talking about power, who is going to do what, and who is going to lead, and all that, who is going to stand at the left side of Jesus and the right side of Jesus, and all that they were having all this uh, confusion. So Jesus was giving an example like how a child is without any uh, expectation expectation of any power power or anything but the child uh, submits uh, the child uh, himself so by, by becoming as little children jesus did not mean actually that they should be ignorant about uh, but it he was teaching about the humility that was needed to enter into the kingdom of heaven so uh, moving on so uh, uh, next slide so moving on so is there uh, are there any bi biblical characters who display this uh, the spiritual toddler face so uh, the Samaritan woman. So we find her story in uh, John chapter four. Uh, those days, Samaritans were looked down as outcasts of Jews. This particular woman, this uh, Samaritan woman, came by the well, and uh, she believed that no one could uh, would ever be there in the heat of the night because she came during the daytime. So she know the, about uh, the history. So she is talking or she is picking up a conversation with Jesus. In fact, Jesus was speaking, trying to talk to her, and uh, she knew the history of the well. She knew the temple uh, was at Jerusalem, and even she knew about the coming of the Messiah. She knew a lot of things. So uh, after her encounter with Jesus, she she goes to the village. She sets aside her uh, reluctant nature, and uh, she is found talking to the men in the city about Jesus. Her bad reputation did not hold her back anymore. She was all with filled with energy, and she wants to talk to people. She wants to make them understand, and she wants them to come back to come to Jesus and uh, see what uh, he has to talk to them. So she was all this bubbly character. Earlier, she was just holding herself back. And now after uh, she is meeting Jesus and she's becoming like a little child wanting to say, talk more to people and to, to share what she has. So uh, moving on, next slide. The second character, which I would like to talk upon is who's having this kind of a character is the centurion. So we you can see his story in Luke chapter uh, chapter seven verses two to nine onwards. So the centurion was a man of authority. He's a Roman soldier, a Gentile, of course. So he has this compassion to his servant. That itself is one, uh, something very hard to find those days where uh, the slave, the uh, slaves or servants were uh, ill-treated those days by the Romans. So this one thing itself is very remarkable to know about him. So those uh, Jewish leaders who found him worthy enough to receive the healing. So the Jewish leaders are trying to uh, convince Jesus to heal him because he has, uh, uh, he is doing some good works and he is worthy to be healed and all that. So he would not, but but he himself would not uh, 
treat himself worthy so he is coming and asking telling jesus that i am not worthy but you can still help my servant so so what happens to a person who just comes into the saving knowledge of christ so so we can see in this centurion that he comes down to jesus leaving all his authority and all he is not bothered about what people is people are going to think he becomes seeking a jew he being a gentile and he being have he being in a powerful uh, responsibility when he is uh, coming down to meet a jew jewish teacher he is not thinking about all that so he is in complete humility when he does this so what happens to a person who is uh, come who first comes into the saving knowledge of christ in other words a new believer what happens to him he is dependent and the best part is that he knows that he is dependent he takes this uh, baby step of uh, faith he falls he gets up and everything is new to him he is filled with awe and uh, Uh, in this period he is in this first uh, the period of first love where he tries to show love towards the lord in all possible ways so this uh, stage is a beautiful like something like a beautiful honeymoon period so can we stay there forever no we cannot because in ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 and 15 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunningness cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ so so the experience itself being born again this experience itself is uh, is the best experience any person could have but growing up in knowledge of jesus is something which uh, would keep us watchful in the wind of doctrine especially these days we have so many new drug doctrines coming up every now and then so we need to be watchful so here i would like to share an experience so earlier when i <coughs> came to the lord i was having all this uh, excuse me when i came to the lord when that uh, when i was in cochin so uh, i used to sit i used to uh, switch on the tv god channel or whatever channel i used to sit and beat any speaker whatever that speaker is speaking i used to make notes and uh, take a pencil and i would just sit and make notes or refer bible and all that so it doesn't bother who is speaking what he is speaking what doctor doctor it is so i will sit there with all that enthusiasm of learning something and uh, take notes and all that so that is a uh, a uh, child like uh, faith which you have and you uh, when you are new in the, in the lord everything is new to you you are walking your big baby steps so uh, moving on uh, so we are moving on so we are going to the next stage next slide so the rebellious teenager so uh, this is this phase this teenage phase we all know that the the age where the father is not exactly a superhero and the mother of course does not have answers to every question so this uh, they are still uh, dependent on their parents but they don't seem to acknowledge it so they are not content like uh, with small things and simple things anymore like a toddler and they dwell in their own thoughts and ideas which is uh, and they truly believe that it is right whatever they think is right and whatever they do is right they question to the parents they reason out they justify they fight for their space and of course they have all these more frequent mood swings so these uh, these are the characters of a teenager so are there any by examples in the bible of course there are plenty there are bible is full of such characters and uh, right from the garden of eden where adam replaced god the woman whom you have who whom you gave to me she gave me the tree from the tree and i ate so and another classic example is where the cane says am i my brother's keeper so all these are the characters of a teenager a rebellious teenager so after the great exodus of israel we find god addressing them as stiff stiff necked people in hebrew the word is koshe or ref so it is translated as stiff or hard or harsh neck so the root word actually it originated from a, a agricultural term when an ox refuses to bend its neck to be yoked so the farmer will definitely have to be harsh on it and to deal with this unsubmissive uh, uh, ox in his own way 
so in the wilderness god was feeling uh, feeding them with heavenly manna and yet they wanted uh, and they craved for earthly meat they wanted to eat meat in spite of god feeding a heavenly manna so that was their uh, nature so in uh, samuel first uh, samuel uh, chapter 23 for uh, rebellion is the, uh, is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry so it it is like uh, so this was so i'm here when i talk about a rebellion i'm not going to talk about a lucifer or satan because he has gone to a point of no return so i'm not going to talk about it. so uh, out of all these character there are so many characters which we can talk about we can take examples of but uh, i will be talking about two characters so the first character next slide uh, is samson so samson he was the promised son of his parents so in judges uh, 13 chapter 13 onwards uh, it is his story samson's story so judges uh, chapter 13 verse 5 for behold you shall conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come upon his head for the child shall be a nazarite to god from the womb and he shall begin to deliver israel out of the land of philistines verse 24 and 25 so the woman bore a son and called his name samson and the child grew and the lord blessed him and the spirit of the lord began to move upon him so in chap moving on to chapters 14 and 15 we re read about samson killing uh, a lion with his bare hands killing 30 men and again killing a thousand men with a, a donkey's job so uh, these three different incidents but there is one common thing in all these that the spirit of lord came mightily upon samson so the bible describes like that so in chapter 15 verse 20 uh, it says that and he judged israel 20 years in the days of the philistines so the in the following chapter we see his uh, downfall so he went to a harlot in the, uh, the verse one it uh, describes that he went to a harlot and he trips over delilah and he in the name of love so but uh, delilah we know that she is in love of uh, love with money so samson knew she, of course he knew that she is not trustworthy but yet he was uh, stuck on to her and the name of love so she pestered him so much that he finally gave in so in judges uh, chapter 16 verse 17 samson uh, told delilah all his uh, uh, heart and said to her no razor has ever come upon my my head for i have been an astray to god from my mother's womb if i am shaven then my strength will leave me and i shall become weak and be like in a, any other man so does uh, samson's strength come from his hair in uh, certain sunday schools maybe the children are taught like that but does the does his strength actually come from his hair so in the earlier chapter uh, early chapter we saw that he performed extraordinary things when the spirit of lord came upon him he was not like uh, some kind of a person who uh, they show in the guinness uh, record holder i think we have lost her actually one explains what is an as right work it can be taken by both men and women are you able to hear me now we can yes, hear you we, can. we lost you for 2 seconds oh, okay okay so uh, i was talking about an as right work so uh, in numbers chapter 6 verse 1 to 21 a uh, next slide uh, shubha body not even for his father mother or siblings so these are the conditions these are the conditions so uh, the word nazir in hebrew means next uh, slide uh, shubha so th these are the so the words nazir in hebrew means consecrated so the eligibility criteria for this verb is to be separated for the lord so in chapter in numbers chapter 6 verse 2 it says when either a man or a woman consecrates an offering to take vow of a nazirite to separate himself to the lord 
So this is how the vow, is, uh, the Nazareth vow starts. So in Samson's case, which we see when we see that he had not cut his hair from the birth, but he went uh, to, a, to a harlot and he was flirting with an ungodly woman. So, but unfortunately, Samson thought that it was enough for him to grow his hair long and call himself separated. So something, it is something like how a believer thinks that uh, being baptized and going to a Sunday church on a Sunday is enough to enter into heaven. So Samson was thinking something like that, that by growing his hair alone uh, is enough to be a Nazareth. But the first of the homo condition to even to uh, come under that category is to be separated for the purposes of God. So uh, when we read Samson's story, we might uh, think we might judge Samson thing saying that why did he fall for this woman who was ungodly who was selfish and all that so but when we come across a similar situations in our own life is it e uh, is it easy for us to take a stand for uh, from ungodly relationship so something that we should think uh, think about before judging another person is that when we are put in a similar situation are we able to take a stand because in samson's story when we read we know okay what uh, delilah is doing and what uh, towards end what is happening to samson because of that but when it comes to us we don't know what is going to happen in future and when uh, uh, we know that it is a godly ungodly relationship and how are we taking a stand First Corinthians was uh, chapter six, verse fourteen. Do not uh, be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? So uh, when when we should we should think about uh, this when we have a relationship which is not right according to the word of God or not right according to God, and when when uh, people when the children of God, when your friends who are in the Lord, when they are trying to point out things to you and how well are we taking that so samson's story uh, is like that so we uh, we can picture him somebody like uh, who comes in the movie hulk so this this green colored person who is has a huge uh, body and he has this so much of strength but then he uh, towards the end he will he will be subdued because of his girlfriend and they'll bring this lady there and he, they'll try to subdue him so it is something similar to that so uh, next slide so the next character which i would like to talk upon is jonah jonah or yonah in hebrew so he is not like the usual prophets like hosea or ezekiel or daniel listening to whatever god is saying or something like that when god specifically the chapter starts like this when god is specifically instructing him to go eastward to the, towards nineveh and the capital of assyria but he went the, went the opposite he went westward to tarshish so thinking that he could walk away from the presence of God, like it's a typical Eden Garden syndrome, uh, hiding from, uh, trying to hide from an omnipresent God. So he was doing something like that. So we know, we definitely know the story of Jonah. He was thrown into the sea and he was swallowed by a fish. So what was, what was he doing all these three days inside the belly of the fish? Of course, it would have been dark. It would have been so negative. He would have, have had all kinds of fears this, uh, inside the belly of the fish. It is not a pleasant thing, pleasant place to be. So he was uh, definitely, he would have been, initially he would have been complaining and he would have tried to justify, or maybe he was filled with a lot of doubt and hopelessness that he would not uh, survive. So in this uh, book, chapter uh, 2, verse 9, it goes like this. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have worked. Salvation is of the Lord. So salvation uh, of the Lord in Hebrew is uh, like this. It's Eshuata le Yehovah. So, uh, so in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So even when Jonah was uh, inside the belly of a fish in complete darkness even on the after even after three days and three nights he would have been completely uh, uh tired and he would have completely lost every hope but the moment he called on the name of the lord yeshua and yehova he was saved the fish vomited and god actually god spoke to the fish so we see that it's only the in only man who has this problem in understanding all his creation when god earlier speaks to the sea and the and the sea, the sea obeys and the fish he speaks 
to the fish and fish obeys. So each and every created things obeys the creator, but it's only, uh, the, only man who has this problem of obedience. Sometimes I personally think that, okay, we should not have exactly given the freedom of choice because we don't deserve it at all. So Jonah, uh, being a prophet, why did he disobey? In, uh, John, in, in the same uh, book for chapter four, he says, so he prayed to the Lord and said, ah, Lord, what was not this what I have what I said when I was still in my country therefore I will I fled previously to Tarshish for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness no one relents uh, one who relents from doing harm so Jonah is again trying to justify uh, that what why he went to Tarshish and uh, because he knows that okay when he goes and he speaks to this uh, uh, this people Assyria was an enemy of Israel and uh, moreover it was a Gentile nation. So uh, Jonah being a devout uh, Jew, he was not able to understand why was God of God of Israel being merciful to a Gentile nation who do not know him and who did not worship uh, him or keep any of his statutes or commandments. So we, when in the communion message, we saw that clipping where, uh, where a person is asking Jesus the question uh, that why will uh, a Gentile nation, an enemy nation come and uh, celebrate the Sukkot the, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, what it is for them. So they don't even know any of our rituals. They don't know why we are doing it, but why, why, is the, why, why are they coming to Jerusalem? So he is not able to understand that why is God being so merciful when uh, God is saying that God so loved the world. So it would have been, it actually, it would have hit all their understanding of any Jew for that matter. So they were all these people trying to keep law for generations and generations. And suddenly a Gentile is coming, person who, were, who was behind idols, they are coming into the faith and God is so loving to them. And they, they may not know, like Jonah is trying to question, he's trying to reason out with God as to why is such a thing happening. I am a prophet and I am a Jew by birth and uh, I know you I worship you and why are you bothered about a place called Azria who a place called Nineveh who are into deep sin who don't even know you so the shepherd who loves who leaves this 99 and goes in search of that one lost sheep so would definitely go to to a person to to save a thousand uh, uh, one lakh and twenty thousand people in Nineveh so God is saying that so those, those there are so many people over there and why how will I have not have mercy upon them so the God the shepherd who goes back in search of just one sheep so definitely a God a God who is merciful will go go and save these people so next slide so uh, this is something similar like the parable of the lost son so in Luke chapter 15 verse 11 onwards we come across this beautiful and the most uh, talked about uh, parable of this merciful father whose sons were nothing like him. So the younger one asks uh, his father for his portion. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 a verses 18 and 19. Uh, it goes like this. If a man has to, as a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and who, when they have chastened him, will not heed to them, then his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders of the city and to the gate of, the, uh, of his city. Verse 21. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So this is the law which was given for a stubborn and a son who is rebellious. So, but this father, the father in this parable is a merciful and he, when the son is asking for the property, he divided his portion and gave it to his son. The son, of course, he spends all what he has and he, when he hits his lowest point of his life, he comes back to his senses and he returns to his father. So this time he is coming not to claim the remaining property or his any of his right, but he is coming to be accepted as a servant. So, but yet uh, we see this elder son who was, uh, he was, he was also not good enough. So he was uh, angry 
and was not ready to accept his uh, own brother who returned to his father. The father was trying to cover the shame of the son with his best robe, but thus, on the contrary, the son, this uh, elder son was trying to expose all his sin, that how he spent his money with harlots and why are you, he spent all your money and he was so rude to you and uh, he was trying to distract his father's love. So uh, he was some somebody like uh, the prophet Jonah. He was jealous and uh, and could have uh, become like a stumbling block uh, between the brother, the younger brother and the father, but for the father's love. So no matter how we are, how how long we are in the Lord, if we still compare ourselves with others and complain to God and try to uh, question God's love and God's sovereign nature, the the whole purpose is lost. So the younger son in this parable is was like a typical teenager talking of his rights and space, but one fine day he comes back to his senses. So this is the beginning of the adulthood. Next slide. The surrendered adult. So it is a phase when you finally come back to your sense and agree that the father is always right. So I am going to uh, here. I'm going to not going to talk about Jesus here because uh, we all know that he from the beginning was in this stage and he doesn't change at all. So there are many characters in the Bible who have walked through this teenage phase and reached the adulthood eventually. So moving on, next slide. So we, uh, uh, I'll be talking about. Uh, Aaron the high priest. So why Aaron of all people? Because he was there when uh, the, uh, the golden calf incident, the, when they were uh, worshipping the golden calf, he was there. Yes, he was there. He was there and he was uh, the one who was doing all that and he was involved, completely involved in that, uh, the great sin of this golden calf. But it was his learning phase. In Leviticus chapter 10, Aaron's sons, uh, Nadab and Abihu, offered a profane fire before the Lord and they were consumed by the Lord. In verse 3, uh, and Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying by those who come near me, I must be... Uh, I must be regarded as holy and before all people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. So Aaron uh, was this high priest and he was qualified to even to enter uh, into the Holy of Holies uh, on the Day of Atonement. Uh, but still, when he, all this happened, he was standing still. He was holding on to his peace. He was com he completely surrendered to God's judgment. He did not reason out or argue like, I am the one who ministers to you. I uh, I please you by offering, uh, uh, offering may, doing all the offerings and sacrifices. And I am the one who's burning incense and all that. He did not reason out. And uh, if you see in read in that chapter, he was not even allowed to mourn for his sons. So when we face difficulties, do we question God? Why Lord? Why me? So in Genesis chapter 3 was 17. Then to Adam, Lord said, because you have heeded to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree. So he's turned towards Abraham and he says, because of this, you're facing this. So uh, uh, like Shubha was sharing today, uh, God is answering your, your questions. And some questions I personally feel that it is better not to ask because what will happen if he answers? So in midst of all my troubles, all our troubles, I never have, I have not asked this question, why Lord, why me? Because what happens, like how he listed to Abraham, to, sorry, lifted, listed to uh, Adam, the sin which he had committed. What if he lists that the sin which I committed because you did this, because you did that and that and that and list goes on and on and how embarrassing it would be if, if at all God is answering that question. So for that one reason, I never asked this question, why God, why is this happening to me? So even uh, even though uh, Aaron saw his sons die, he held his peace and he knew that uh, the Lord whom he served was all always right. He did not go there and he did not justify, he did not question God's judgment, nothing. Sometimes we take the judgment seat even to judge the God who, or who already is a good judge. So we uh, do some, uh, sometimes we do that, that sin uh, of uh, judging God himself. 
so but aaron was uh, different he was he was and what kind of face he would have uh, he would face he should face the, the multitude after that uh, they would they would have uh, thought in their mind okay even a high priest the children are not good enough and all that so all these doubts would have gone into his mind but he stood still he did not react he was holding his peace so matthew chapter 10 verse 37 and 39 38 jesus says he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he who loves a son daughter or more than me is not worthy of me so here jesus is definitely not uh, saying that you will have to leave all your uh, uh, your parents without caring for them or leave all your children without caring it only means that the priority should be the lord so that is the example where what uh, Aaron stood by and that is why he was uh, exalted. He was even when he died, his uh, people mourned for 30 days like how they mourned for uh, Moses. Next slide. So Peter, next example, I would be talking about Peter. So this impulsive di uh, uh, G uh, disciple of Jesus who always wanted to imitate uh, what Jesus was uh, doing. So Peter is one such kind. So Peter, he his life with Jesus started well in Luke chapter 5, verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into, this, uh, into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So Jesus, a teacher by passion and a carpenter by profession, is taking fishing lessons to a Peter who was uh, almost like a PhD holder in fishing and he has done his part and he asks him to let down his net for a catch. In verse 5, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So he did not reason with the teacher, but he let his net down. So sometimes we we too have to let down our beliefs or practices and say, Lord, that it, at your word, I will let down. So when Peter walked in, on water uh, like Jesus, he tripped and fell because he, he was not focusing on Jesus. Jesus. Then he was able to walk uh, because he was started looking up to Jesus. But during crucifixion also, his focus slightly shifted and he again tripped and he denied Jesus. And after the resurrection, Jesus came, came to him and he uh, restores uh, Peter back. And then there is no turning back. And Acts chapter 5 verses 15 says that Peter this shadow healed the sick yet he stood on because he stood on the rock called jesus and he was doing all these signs and wonders he was establishing he was an apostle he was establishing church he was preaching the gospel far, far and wide so he uh, even after the the uh, face of uh, this uh, teenage he came to the uh, the face of the surrendered adult because of which he was able to do greater things for the kingdom of god so in uh, so we have seen all these three stages, uh, three stages uh, of our spiritual walk. And uh, I personally ask each one of you uh, to this question in which uh, stage we are in. So uh, most of uh, uh, us uh, uh, having coming to the church regularly and uh, doing all kinds of uh, being in the Lord for so many years, we would have definitely crossed this uh, toddler stage of taking baby steps of faith. So that leads to the other two stages, and two stages, the teenager and the adult. Or it is a bit of both because sometimes it will be, we all will be in that spiritual high. You can all look, almost see a halo around our head. And some other days will be in that low phase where we almost have two horns overhead. So in the spiritual sense, this teenage phase is a very dangerous place to be where uh, because we get tossed by different doctrines and uh, there is a lot of confusion because we tend to learn a lot and there will be so many things in our head uh, uh, going on and uh, we'll be tossed to and fro with all the doctrines. And 2 Tim Timothy was 4. Uh, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 says that for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears and they will uh, heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. 
so this is uh, this is not like somebody is forcing these doctrines down your throat down your throat because we want to hear what we what we like and we choose the leaders to suit our own passions this is happening so it is not that okay false doctrine somebody is saying that coming with a, a placard saying that i'm a false teacher and uh, they is, they are not going to shove it uh, into your throat but it is we who go in search of them because we like to hear what they say because it is so soothing to the ears and we take it and we choose the people who are uh, talking these things so the um, so the ideal place to be or to reach is to the adult phase definitely where jesus is the lord over of uh, every areas in our life so how do we get there so uh, the first and foremost is that we should not re reason out with god like jonah or flirt with the world like uh, samson but surrender our lives to the lord like aaron and focus to jesus like peter so sometimes yes we'll have to leave or uh, let go of our comforts beliefs and even certain relationships like how peter said to jesus nevertheless at your word a lot jesus i will let it all down so next slide last one so moving on to i'll just read this one uh, verse written by peter so 1 peter chapter 5 verse 6 therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he cares for you so when the thought that god created us his in own image puffs up your head let the thought that he is made out of the dust keep us grounded so the humility comes through spiritual maturity so let us i pray that we all will reach that stage surrender we know that we are grown up we know we have so we can do certain things on our own but yet we surrender we are completely surrendered under the lordship of jesus like uh, uh, how peter was peter was healing people he was his, even his shadows was were healing but yet he was grounded he was he was standing on that solid rock called jesus his feet was grounded to the ground and he was not floating in the air he was head was not puffed up so he was standing there and he was doing because he that is when god was god would work through each one of us when we come to that place of humility uh, that because only through that maturity will come humility so it is not it is not exactly how people uh, grow in a normal physical life when you uh, enter that stage of adulthood you will start doing things uh, uh, independently you will be more independent you can go out places on your own you can do take decisions uh, like how and when you like and all that that is not uh, the spiritual maturity or the spiritual adulthood a spiritual adult adulthood is a uh, complete it's a stage of maturity where you completely surrender yet yes you can do so many things you can so many you can do so many things but yet you will be under the lordship of jesus christ so that is when because because that is when you will have that uh, power yes with so much of power comes so much uh, with a lot of humility comes a lot of power when you humble yourself when you humble yourself and you when you surrender yourself to god there comes this humility and god will use each one of us more and more so let us all leave set aside all that uh, teenage phase of our lives where we uh, question where we can question of course we can question god but we cannot uh, reason or try to justify our sins like how we saw those two examples of uh, samson and uh, jonah so samson was completely lost because he was uh, uh, he, he was completely lost actually he thought maybe he was not he was thought that way by not cutting his hair he'll have that power so he was having this little uh, that uh, false doctrine in his head saying that this is this is enough this much is enough for god this much whatever i do this so much is enough uh, for for me to uh, be powerful so that is what he thought so let us not be like that thinking that okay whatever i do is enough is good enough for god so let us go, uh, come uh, work uh, work out like let us come like peter let us come out like uh, aaron where uh, aaron stands there and not reasoning out and peter does all these things when his focus is on jesus and he was standing on solid ground so yeah so let us all come to that the final stage of spiritual maturity let's pray father god thank you lord for this day lord god that you have uh, taught us lord god so many things lord so many simple things lord god but yet uh, 
Yet, O Lord God, let us let each one of us examine our hearts and find out in which stage we are in right now, O Lord God, and let us leave all our old ways, O Lord God, and come back to you, O Lord God, with the with the humility of a child, O Lord God. Yet, uh, the uh, yet uh, agreeing and accepting the sound knowledge which comes through your word, O Lord God, listening to your word, O Lord. Let us earn for your uh, spirit of discernment, O Lord God, to to distinguish between the right and the wrong oh lord god yes oh lord and let us uh, abide in you oh lord god let us stand on the solid ground oh lord god thank you lord bless each one of us oh lord god thank you lord father in the name of your son yeshua i pray amen amen, amen. thank you sister for reminding us uh, uh, the journey the spiritual journey that we all go through what are the pitfalls and things that we don't yes. understand or see uh, so let's uh, close with uh, the benediction. Love of Father, uh, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can you all put your camera on? Hello. Hello. The recording is still going on. Yeah, okay. So